Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters. Emotions influence every aspect of our lives, from the decisions we make, to the words we speak, and the relationships we build. Yet, mastering our emotions is perhaps one of the most challenging tasks. The beautiful religion of Islam provides profound wisdom on how to manage our feelings, ensuring they don't overwhelm us but rather enhance our spiritual journey. This video explores the Islamic perspective on emotional control, offering both spiritual insights and practical advice. In the times we live where stress and anxiety seem pervasive, learning to control our emotions is not just beneficial, it is essential for our spiritual and mental well-being. Islam does not ask us to suppress our emotions, but instead teaches us to understand and regulate them to achieve a balanced life. Through the teachings of the Quran and Hadith, this guide will explore how to harness our emotions effectively. Islamic teachings provide the tools to transform our inner turmoil into peace. This video will delve into these tools through Quranic verses, sayings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and historical anecdotes. Whether it's dealing with anger, cultivating patience, or fostering gratitude, you'll find enriching insights here. By the end, you should feel more equipped to handle your emotional world, making each step in life a more reflective and meaningful journey. In Islam, emotions are considered an integral part of human nature, created by Allah to test our faith and resilience. The Quran speaks frequently about emotions, recognizing them as essential components of the human experience. Emotions themselves are not viewed as obstacles. Rather, it's how we handle these emotions that can lead to either constructive or destructive outcomes. This understanding is pivotal, as it forms the foundation of emotional mastery in Islamic teaching. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, The strong is not the one who overcomes the people by his strength, but the strong is the one who controls himself while in anger. This hadith emphasizes the importance of self-control and the high regard Islam places on managing one's emotional responses. It highlights that real strength lies not in physical power or aggressive control over others, but in the quiet internal battle of managing one's emotions. Islamic scholars have long discussed the concept of emotional intelligence from a religious perspective, linking it to the higher purpose of serving Allah with a sound heart. The heart, in Islamic teachings, is not just a physical organ but a spiritual entity where emotions and faith reside. Purifying the heart, therefore, involves aligning our emotional responses with Islamic principles. This alignment helps in nurturing a heart that is serene, content, and resilient against the tumultuous waves of challenging feelings. Saba, or patience, is a frequently mentioned virtue in the Quran and is considered one of the most rewarding behaviors in the eyes of Allah. It is the practice of restraining oneself during times of challenge or hardship, including controlling one's emotions. The Quran states, O oh, you who have believed, seek help through patience and prayer. Indeed, Allah is with the patient, Quran 2, 153. This verse not only underscores the virtue of patience, but also reminds believers that they are not alone in their struggles. Patience is particularly powerful when dealing with negative emotions. It acts as a shield, protecting one from saying or doing things that they might regret later. For instance, during moments of anger or despair, Patience helps one to pause, reflect, and respond in a manner that aligns with Islamic teachings. This ability to pause is crucial. It gives space for reason and faith to guide our reactions rather than raw emotion. Storytelling in Islamic tradition often highlights the importance of patience. The story of Prophet Yusuf Joseph is a profound example. Despite the severe trials he faced from being betrayed by his brothers to being wrongly imprisoned, Yusuf exhibited exceptional patience, which eventually led to his exoneration and elevation in society. His story teaches us that patience is not passive waiting, but an active engagement in faith, leading to spiritual growth and eventual divine reward. Anger is a natural human emotion, but in Islam, it is something that believers are encouraged to control and manage wisely. Prophet Muhammad, PBUH, provided practical advice on managing anger, emphasizing its importance through his teachings and personal example. 
He said, do not become angry and paradise will be yours. The simplicity of this statement belies the profound challenge it poses. To conquer one's anger is to make significant spiritual progress. One of the methods taught by the prophet to manage anger is to change one's physical position. If standing, sit. If sitting, lie down. This physical change can help dissipate the intensity of anger, offering a moment to recalibrate one's emotional state. Additionally, performing ablution, wudu, is recommended when one feels the surge of anger. Water has properties that help cool down both the physical and emotional states, aiding in regaining composure. Furthermore, the Prophet encouraged silent reflection during times of anger. This method involves stepping back from the situation to gather one's thoughts and emotions. By delaying reaction, one allows wisdom and patience to guide the response instead of impulsiveness. This practice is not just about suppressing anger, but transforming it into a controlled response that upholds dignity and respect for oneself and others involved. Gratitude, or shuka, is another central theme in Islamic teachings on emotion management. It transforms our perspective, allowing us to focus on blessings rather than deficits. The Quran states, If you are grateful, I will surely increase you. But if you deny, indeed, my punishment is severe. Quran 14, 7. This verse highlights the amplifying effect of gratitude. Being thankful not only pleases Allah, but also attracts more blessings into our lives. Practicing gratitude shifts our mental focus from what we lack to what we have, fostering a positive emotional landscape. This shift is crucial during times of hardship when it's all too easy to become enveloped in despair and negativity. By focusing on the blessings in our lives, we cultivate a sense of abundance which can buffer against the feelings of scarcity and loss. Moreover, gratitude strengthens relationships. When we express thankfulness towards others, it nurtures goodwill and appreciation, reinforcing bonds and promoting a positive social environment. In the family context, for instance, a simple act of acknowledging each other's efforts can significantly enhance the harmony and emotional climate of the household. Forgiveness is a profound aspect of managing emotions in Islam. It is about freeing one's heart from the grip of grudges and resentment. The Prophet Muhammad PBUH said, The merciful are shown mercy by the merciful. Be merciful on the earth and you will be shown mercy from above. This hadith not only encourages forgiveness, but aligns it with receiving mercy from Allah, thus elevating its spiritual significance. Forgiving someone who has wronged us can be challenging, but it is a liberating act that cleanses the heart of negative emotions. It allows us to let go of past hurts and move forward with peace. This does not mean that we allow others to continue harming us. Rather, it means we choose not to carry the burden of their actions in our heart. By doing so, we open ourselves to new experiences and deeper understandings without the weight of past bitterness. In addition to personal peace, forgiveness has a transformative effect on relationships. It can turn potential long-term conflicts into opportunities for growth and deeper understanding. It is not about who is right or wrong, but about valuing the relationship more than the ego. This perspective is vital in maintaining harmony and love among family, friends and the community. Mastering emotions is not merely about suppressing them, but understanding and channeling them in a way that is constructive. The first step in this process is self-awareness, recognizing what you feel and why you feel it. This can be achieved through regular self-reflection and meditation, practices encouraged in Islam to foster a deeper connection with one's inner self and with Allah. Developing a routine of daily prayers, Salah, is a practical way to enhance emotional control. Salah provides multiple opportunities throughout the day to recalibrate one's emotional state, align with spiritual goals and seek guidance from Allah. Additionally, fasting during Ramadan and other times provides a unique discipline that strengthens self-control, including control over one's emotions. Moreover, seeking knowledge through the Quran and Hadith can guide emotional management. Learning about the life of the Prophet Muhammad, PBUH, and his companions 
provides real-life examples of emotional mastery. Engaging in community activities and seeking the company of the righteous can also offer support and practical advice, as being around those who embody Islamic teachings can inspire and motivate better emotional health. Alhamdulillah, we have explored various facets of emotional mastery through the wisdom of Islam. From understanding the nature of emotions and the virtues of patience and gratitude to the practices of anger management, forgiveness and practical steps for emotional control, Islam offers a comprehensive guide for nurturing a spiritually and emotionally balanced life. As we continue on this journey, let us strive to embody these teachings, enhancing not only our personal growth, but also contributing to the well-being of our communities. Emotional mastery is not achieved overnight, but is a continuous journey of self-improvement and spiritual reflection. By returning to these teachings and integrating them into daily life, we can hope to achieve a state of peace and contentment, navigating the challenges of life with faith and wisdom. May Allah guide us and provide us with the strength to transform our emotional trials into opportunities for spiritual growth. <laughs>